All right, uh, it's one o'clock, so I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Ziva Shahar, and I'm an international student advisor at Berkeley Extension. And welcome to our workshop on setting up an ergonomic workstation at home. Uh, today, we're very excited to be joined by Greg Ryan, a campus ergonomist with University Health Services at UC Berkeley. He's been on campus for 13 years, and he is a specialist in preventative ergonomics as well as post-injury ergonomics. And I just want to let everyone know that this session is being recorded and will be shared out afterwards. And I uh, also want to let you know that there's a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So please do ask questions throughout the presentation by typing them into that Q&A. And I'll be asking Greg your questions throughout the presentation. So feel free to ask whenever they come up and we'll try to address them in the moment as much as possible. So thank you so much for joining and I'll hand it over to Greg to get started. Thanks so much, Ziva. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, thank you for having me, spending time with me. Appreciate that. Um, you know, like the slide says, it's, uh, we're going to set up our workstation ergonomically today. Um, discuss that. Discuss some of the risks at home. You know, the new working environment. Um, you know, all all kind of different things. Some products we can use. Um, this is kind of a combination of a, a few presentations I've done in the past. Um, you know, one, the basic, you know, setting up your workstation at home. Um, you know, as we all went through it, you know, all of a sudden we were working at home overnight. And then for myself, I had about 15,000 employees working at home overnight to serve. Um, so, like Ziva said, I do a lot of uh, preventative work, and that's where, where I like to do most of my work here, to teach people how to prevent injuries, um, but I also you know, have to deal with a lot of injuries at, at campus as well. Um, so the first thing I'll do is apologize for not having a camera today, and um, part of this whole thing is trying to be more flexible with uh, how we work, of course. Uh, so my wife works at a hospital, was called in today, so I'm at home with my 10 and a half year old um, and I'm gonna bring that into the conversation as well. So I know a lot of us are having you know, children at home. Um, so we'll talk about working, uh, setting up their, their workstations as well. So I've uh, done a lot of work with work life um, on campus, trying to you know, deal with uh, children at home, ergonomics, as well as just wellness aspects um, on top of it. So we'll discuss all those things today. So like Ziva said, um, please feel free to you know, ask questions. Um, we'll try to be as fluid as possible. Um, but a lot of people have the same similar type questions, so I want to address those if they're if they're uh, current. Well, let's get started and uh, talk a little bit about our new new working environment. Um, and what I like to do is try to share uh, kind of latest research. Um, you know, try to I try to stay up to date on all the latest ergonomics research. Uh, like most things out there today, there's a lot of misinformation um, on ergonomics, so. Try to give you the you know the latest research and then also we live in reality uh that research doesn't often mimic reality so try to blend those two together try to you know optimize our our workstations you know at home so you know we've gone from having a really nice workstation probably at our at our office and all of a sudden we're sitting on either hard chairs soft chairs you know all kind of different equipment so um I've done probably over a hundred uh, evaluations since this started, and I would say almost all of them are different. Um, so each case is unique, even myself is unique. Um, that's the beautiful thing about ergonomics. Um, everyone's different and you've got to kind of figure it out. It took me a while to figure it out. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, so, you know, everyone's body's a little bit different. Um, so we'll discuss, you know, ways to set it up safely uh, and use what we have uh, as much as possible. Um, you know, where to sit, where not to sit, what, how we can use a, you know, a dining room chair, and make it, you know, a little bit more ergonomic. Um, but there are, you know, these are sometimes really difficult situations and you will have to purchase usually some type of equipment too. So we'll discuss uh, keyboards, mice, you know, different types of input um, devices as well. And then just overall environment. Um, it, you know, it's nice to work at home, I'm sure for a lot of us, um, it, it's comfortable. But a lot of things that we don't think about, like lighting, um, but we have a lot of control at the office. We don't have a ton of control in, in, our, um, in our houses. So we're seeing a lot of eye issues, um, you know, things that you would think that would make sense. We can move around a lot more uh, 
in our houses, but the research isn't showing that. It's showing that we get stuck on a couch, we get stuck in one place, a lot like we do at work for, for too, too long. So, um, you know, things have changed, the type of work, I think there's a lot more screen time, we're Zooming a lot more obviously. I'm sure you've seen the, the research on the Zoom fatigue. Um, we've all felt it at this point. It's, it's, it's a true, it's research-based. Um, it just saps your energy. Um, and then there's ergonomic components to as well. You know, you're focusing on the screen. And like most of us, if you look at those pictures there, your head and your body starts to go towards your visual target usually. Um, so a lot of us end up leaning forward without back support. Uh, and not in good, you know, ergonomic neutral postures. We'll discuss ways to get get safe today. And in the big picture, a lot of screen time. So new distractions. I love these. You can go all day with them. But you know, we have a lot of people have been working from home for a long time. Um, so we've dealt with this, you know, for a while now. But you know, the distractions are much different. Um, so a lot of us have pets, kids. Um, I mean, there might be leaf blowers, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So it's just a whole different environment in terms of lighting, air quality, uh, and distractions. So like I said, I have a 10 and a half year old, um, and it's tough uh, from you know getting lunch made, breakfast, all of it, trying to juggle, it's just, it's just not that easy. Um, so we have to look at things a little bit differently, try to set boundaries as, as best possible, try to set up a really good workstation for ourselves and our kids um, and some boundaries. And then, you know, kind of how it's gone in our house, we've just kind of gone to turf wars where people take space and you have to move around constantly. And that's not so bad if things are, if things are set up well. Um, you know, looking at the physical demands of the human body, they, they haven't changed. Our, our physical environment and work have, have changed, but the, the demands on the body have not. So, um, you know, these are kind of more of the, the scientific background of where you're you know what's safe to sit or stand for long periods of time and where your arm should be and the type of foot support so I always like those reference postures because um, it just shows you where we should be where we're trying to be and there is no perfect um, but that's what we're, we're shooting for we're looking for good foot support uh, we want our elbows by our sides we want good thigh support if we're sitting we want our head balanced over our shoulders you know we want to be in a good good solid ergonomic posture uh, and that's where it starts from. So we want to try to mimic that as best as we can at home, um, along with movement and sitting and standing. So the re latest research out of Cornell is that kind of that graphic on the right there. Uh, so for every half hour period, you know, the goal is to sit for 20 minutes, stand for eight and move for two. And again, you know, you look at that as a bell curve type thing. Um, you know, everyone is a little different. And that's a that, that's an average, but you want to keep those ratios in mind. Um, you know, we definitely want to try to move a little bit more than we, we, we do. We want to stand a little bit more generally than we do. Um, and again, like I said, the research is showing is that as usual, we're not, you know, we're, we're, we are busy. We have a lot of work to do and we get stuck in one place and we tend not to move. So we'll discuss some ways to, to change things up, but the goal is to try to make it as close to as work, you know, as your office as possible. So, um, so we get these safe postures where we're balanced, our muscles are, are, are in a good position. They're not overly stretched or overly tight. Um, blood can flow. Um, you know, we're, in, we're in a good place. So that, that's the goal overall. And I think working at home affords us the movement. But again, that's not what the research is showing us. It's showing we're still sitting and we're still not moving as much as possible. So it does take some planning, um, some effort to get things correct. And like I said, everyone's, everyone's a, a little bit different. Um, so in terms of equipment needs, uh, you know, I always think there's going to be some equipment that's going to be needed to make things safe for long-term uh, computer use and uh, as you, most things it comes down to duration or, or how how much you use something um, so if you're on the computer for an hour a day you know you could probably work on your laptop and that's that's safe and not a big deal but anything over an hour a day with a laptop um, the research is showing you, you need to separate the screen from your hands um, so you want to separate the monitor and the input devices. So that's the, you know, the ergonomic flaw of the, of the laptop is that they're connected. So if your hands are in the right place, your neck won't be and vice versa. Uh, so it's not an, an ergonomic tool. So you have to have some, you know, at least I would say minimally, you know, an external keyboard and mouse 
you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. Um, that first one there is, you know, kind of a basic setup from, from Amazon or CDWG. And we'll talk about products a little bit later. Um, but relatively, you know, $20, $30, you can get an external, you know, even wireless keyboard and mouse and, you know, make things a little bit more comfortable. Uh, the picture to the right there is a little, you know, more ergonomic. There's an ergonomic keyboard, which not everyone needs, or a vertical mouse, which not everyone needs. But, um, you know, you want to make it comfortable. So if you were using those things uh, at, at work or at the office, then you should probably try to mimic it as close as possible at home. Um, so you need to separate the monitor and the input devices. You know, one way to do that is a keyboard and mouse. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people on that first picture on the bottom there um, do it just with their laptop. So they use an HDMI cable or, or you know, converter cable to plug into an external monitor or TV, and that will separate those those two devices. Uh, and a lot of people now are super comfortable with their input devices on their laptop. Um, they like the centralized uh, touchpad. They, they like the keyboard, it's comfortable, um, and I have no problem with that. Uh, is it better to have a full-size keyboard and a mouse for some people? Sure. Um, but again, the biggest point is to separate the input devices from, from the monitor. Uh, so that's kind of, kind of step one. So um, the first thing, especially, you know, one thing we can't get away from is our eyesight. And as I get older, my eyes, I just can't use a 13-inch monitor. It's really, really tough. Uh, so the first thing I did was get an HDMI cable and plug into a, a larger monitor of an old TV like I did there um, just for my eyes because uh, that really, really is tough. And, and eventually, if, if you can't see, your head will start to come forward. And I, I have a really, really large head. It's the average head's like 13 pounds, I think, for humans. Mine's probably 20. So it's really important that it's balanced over my shoulders and I'm not leaning forward, um, which we all tend to do. So we're always looking for that balance um, and some support there. So there's different ways to do it, but you probably will need some type of equipment, at least an external uh, keyboard, mouse, um, you know, and then you can always lean on if you have IT support or external monitors um, are available, you know, even cheaper TV sets, we'll talk about those, but um, there's ways to get external, uh, external devices. What we also want to do is create, try to create some movement. So we know we need to move more. We know we get stuck in sitting positions uh, or even standing positions for long periods of time. So I think it's important to set up a few different stations. Um, you know, one, your primary workstation that's looking very similar to what you have at work. Um, and then also setting up a standing station. So I'm, I have a counter there on the, in the middle one uh, picture uh, on the bottom, but uh, Kitchen counters work very well. Um, they're usually about you know, 32 to 36 inches in height. And you may have to raise it up a little bit, your keyboard and mouse, but those are a good, usually a good height for standing. Um, so it's good to create a standing station and then keep moving. You know, we tell people not to work here, there, or, you know, on soft things, but you know, it's okay to work on the couch for short periods of time. So we'll talk about ways to try to mix things up um, and try to mimic what we're, we're trying to do, you know, in those 30 minutes. Again, there is no perfect, but we want to be sitting, standing and moving around as much as possible. Okay, so some of the risks, I mean, we've dealt with this, um, you know, I see a lot of the, the dining room table, the Frankenstein there, we're just reaching or leaning forward. Um, you know, the real one of the big issues with ergonomics is the height of furniture. And, and basically things that don't move fixed type furniture, especially dining room tables are built very, very high. So, you know, trying to get the 95th percentile male that's like six foot three or six foot two underneath that table. So there's leg clearance underneath it. So for myself with five nine, it's too high for me. It's too high for most of us. So we have to find some way um, to figure that out. So there's all kind of risks. Um, you know, there's hardwood floors that are tough on people's feet. Uh, definitely want to stay away from the beds. Definitely want to stay away from the couches as much as possible. Um, but again, you know, we live in a real world and we are going to get to these places, you know, probably one time during the day. So let's set them up, take a little time, set them up correctly. So like I said, I always look, you know, one, your primary workstation, this is the most important part. This is where you can do most of your work. Um, anything over, I'd say 30 minutes, you know, you want to be having good, good postural support. So go back to those reference posture pictures, you know, you have good foot support. 
Um, sometimes you might need a box or a rolled up yoga mat or something on your feet to give you better foot support because the table's too high. Um, sometimes you need some cushions underneath your, your seat pan area there to raise your hands up to get them to the right height. So we always want the input, the keyboard, keyboards and mice about elbow height. So your, your wrists are nice and straight and your elbows are by your side. So, you know, going around the house and when I did this stuff, um, this workshop for my kid, at her school is like, you know, go around the house, let's take, do a scavenger hunt, you know, grab some pillows, grab some yoga mats, grab some rolled up towels, you know, figure out some way to give you some, some better support. Cause a lot of times it's better to have a hard dining room chair and try to make that comfortable than, than a soft couch. Um, so you can get some lumbar support with a rolled up towel in the lower back. Uh, you know, you can see she's getting some upper back support there about shoulder blade or lower shoulder blade level. Um, you know, heads balanced and then raising up the monitor. So she's not using an external monitor here. I think a lot of us are in this zone where we don't have one, but you can raise up the screen with a laptop lifter or just some books um, uh, or boxes uh, to lift things up. Again, the critical thing is, you know, separating the keyboard and mouse from the monitor and getting some postural support. So here's kind of my situation um, and it's changed uh, over time, but again, trying to get some some support from the chair, um, so using some pillows, raising things up a little bit, trying to keep that wrist straight. Um, you know, in a perfect scenario, you know, and I have the time to set up an external keyboard and mouse like on the right there and get things all in a good situation. That works out a little bit better. But like I said, a lot of times I'm moving quite a bit and it helps me to have that laptop with an HDMI cable where I can just plug into, you know, an external monitor or not when I, when I need to. Um, and I think things gradually change. I was working a lot without shoes at the beginning and then my feet started to hurt. Uh, so the shoes help you give you a little bit better support. Um, my wife doesn't love shoes in the house. So it was one good way to, you know, order some new, new tennis shoes and not take them outside and just wear them around the house or something. But uh, even for sitting, giving you a little bit better support, but definitely for standing, um, foot support is very, very important and comfort in, in shoes. So for the, for the little ones, um, what I found was, was it was really difficult to get, to get them set up. And again, the research and what I've seen from my daughter is very similar, that we, we just tend to sit and get stuck in one place. Um, what I've noticed also with little ones, like, you know, sometimes they're very good typists. Most of the time they're not. So external keyboards and mice, you know, they may push back on a little bit. Um, so having it set up like this where it's somewhere in the middle, it might not be perfect for the hands, it might not be perfect for the neck, but it's somewhere in the middle. And again, using some pillows for postural support. So good lower back, you know, some, some support about shoulder blade level. So your head's balanced over your shoulders, elbows by your sides, wrist straight, you know, it's the same biomechanical principles, trying to get some foot support with a box or, or yoga mat or something there. Um, and then, you know, it keeps changing. Um, so, you know, I've tried different things over time um, with external keyboards and mice and then, you know, maybe using um, game boxes, you know, either on the ground or on the couch or different places. So, you know, for some, for some stability if they're using external keyboards and mice. But like I said, a lot of times they're not touch typists. Um, they have a difficult time with those devices and they're really used to uh, the laptop. So just getting that set up correctly and again I you know the first thing I do is try to get postural support um, the thing we all do it's very very human is just to go forward towards your visual target and you end up leaning forward with no back support or very minimal back support and you know the goal of the chair for long-term sitting is to have that chair act like an exoskeleton where it's actually holding up your spine so the muscles around it can relax your arms can relax and your arms are free and they can move in a, in a nice healthy way for a lot of us, we lean forward, we lean on our arms, and, and that causes a lot of the problem. So I always go back to postural support in the chair, um, number one, and getting things in the right place for your hands and, and your head. Like I said, creating a standing station is very, very important. Um, again, the research is really showing that um, standing adds a little bit of more gravity onto your body. Um, pushes your metabolic pathway into a different direction. Um, it's just good for you for shorter periods of time. You can't stand all day. Um, you know, if you go back to that thing, um, 
the Cornell uh, research, you know, sit for 20, stand for eight, move for two every half hour. Um, so it's not, you know, super, super long. You know, like for most people, I tell, listen to your body. Um, when the first standing stations came out, I got a ton of calls about, oh, my feet are hurt and what do I do? I need an anti-fatigue mat or, and you know, anti-fatigue mats can work and, and good shoes can work. But if your feet are really barking, your legs are barking at you, it's a good time to sit down. So really listen to your body. Like I say, everybody's different. Um, I tend to stand, try to stand more because in this situation, I'm not moving as much as I used to. Um, same thing with my daughter. I see her sitting more. So I try to get her standing more and, and the kitchen's a good place to do it. So, you know, again, using like a game box or something, sometimes you need to raise the level of the keyboard and mouse there to get them about elbow height. So the wrists are straight. And again, using some kind of laptop lifter or a box or microwaves work pretty, you know, work pretty well to lift that screen up with, with the external keyboards and mice. So again, everything's balanced there. Elbows are by the sides. Um, but you got to watch it. I, I really had a tough time with, with the foot support. Um, so uh, again, going back to the, the, one of the yoga mats is my favorite thing to use um, for either rolled up as good foot support sitting or flat like a regular mat while you're standing just to get a little bit of uh, a little bit more support. You know, changing your foot options, um, you know, going from a staggered stance uh, to a straddle stance is good to do. Um, again, just like sitting, standing, we get stuck in one position. So, you know, sharing on one hip um, is very, very similar. So we want to keep on moving. I think one way you can do that is getting a leg up. Uh, if you have something, um, sometimes you can open up a, um, a drawer or, or something to get, a, to get more foot support um, in, the, in the kitchen. Uh, or, you know, use some kind of mat or foot support uh, to get a leg up. That takes a little pressure off your low back. Like I said, it was a it's kind of a process for me uh, on the hardwood floors. Uh, it really started to affect my legs, you know, after about you know, 20, 30 minutes or so. And like I say I get stuck sometimes back in the room. I have no other way place to go. Um, so we have to stand longer than we need to. So, you know, using some mat um, or again, good shoes, uh, you know, take that stress off the feet. So you want to reduce that force there. Um, again, the picture on the right, uh, using the external keyboard and mouse and just using the laptop as a screen, that works really well too. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, so just figure out what works for you. But for most, um, for me, it was the HDMI cable where I can move around with my laptop and plug in for other people is having an external keyboard and mouse where they can use their laptop screen and then plug those in. Uh, so you can do it either way. Again, you know, not to keep harping on, but movement is really, really critical. So here's the yoga mat. Um, again, if you're, you know, barefoot a lot of times or socks, you know, you need some support. Um, you know, I got my, my little one set up in a, you know, pretty good ergo position here. Um, this isn't normal for her, but, uh, you know, again, trying to get things at the right height. So that's the right height for her. That's, um, so the countertop in the kitchen works pretty well for her. I have to raise it up a little bit. Um, so you can kind of mix things up knowing your, you know, your standing elbow height, your sitting elbow height. That's what we're always trying to get the input devices, the keyboard and mouse, right at, you know, elbow height. Um, some things that we get adjustability, you know, you can get boxes or things like that, but, uh, the ironing boards work really, really well. Uh, we used to use them, you know, way back in the day, at, you know, when we were teleconferencing or, uh, in hotels, you know, because they usually have these kind of things and they get, do offer some adjustability, but a lot of people have them at home too. And they offer adjustability and get things to the right height. Um, so either a standing or a sitting station, sometimes they, they work pretty well. So, you know, I always try to encourage people to go around the house, you know, see what they got, work with what they got. Um, say every situation is so different. I mean, so many of my clients just don't have enough room in their houses for a new chair or a new table and you just have to work with what they got. So, um, and for the most part, you can with a couple devices get, get pretty safe there. But inevitably, you know, we're going to get there. We all do. And this is where kind of research and reality hit the road. And, you know, you can, there's plenty of stuff out there. Don't work from here and don't work from there. But I get here. We all probably get here from time to time, um, you know, unless you're super good and have a great workstation. But we get to the couch and I think there's a lot of soft, you know, a lot of soft seating around our houses. And um, it's really, really tough. This is probably my, my toughest position there on the left. Um, 
where I'm just sitting there, I'm just sink, I'm sunk in, I don't really think about it too much. An hour goes by, I get up and I can really feel my hips and lower back and um, it's soft so it kind of feels good but then the lack of movement and the lack of support, you're in really pretty bad positions with your pelvis and back uh, causes you know discomfort over time. And that's what we're seeing in the research too, that people, we do get stuck on these, on these places. So let's try to keep moving. And if we're there, set them up as best we can. So spend a little extra time. And again, going back to the, the laptop, you don't want to be spending a lot of time without external devices. So I just, again, look at this picture and this is short periods of time, but um, you know, you set up pretty well. Uh, probably need some uh, some readers to see the screen from that long, but you know, you try to keep your head balanced over your shoulders with some support. Uh, use your eyes, maybe instead of your neck, to look down. Tilt the screen back a little bit, uh, but it's a pretty good position. You know, he's got some lumbar support there, some upper back support. It's comfortable, um, but again, even you know, in this position, it's, it's for short short periods of time. And again, some of these other ones, um, I look at these uh, all very similar to working on our posture or just very short periods. Um, so the two there without back support, uh, it's okay to, to work without postural support for short periods of time because you're working on your posture. So your core muscles are working. Um, that's great. But most of us can't hold that for long, long periods of time. So usually anything over about an hour, you're going to need some type of support or your muscles will start getting tight, putting pressure on um, you know, the musculoskeletal system and, and issues can arise there. But I do like you know, sitting up a little bit higher, um, getting the pelvis to rotate forward a little bit and getting into good posture, but knowing you're not going to be able to hold that for long periods of time. So these are the places you go for little, little short spurts. Um, similar to like a Swiss ball or a medicine ball when you're sitting on those or stools and without back support, very, very similar. Um, really good for working on your posture, working on your core, not good for long periods of time. So, you know, I'm thinking 15 to 30 minutes max uh, on these type of postures, but they are good for you. You know, lighting in the house, um, this is probably one of our most difficult places. Again, every situation is different. Um, but what I've noticed that this is, this is a really, really tough, uh, we're all going in the same direction. Unfortunately, our eyes are you know, generally going to get worse as we age, uh, and we're spending more and more time on our devices. So whether it's, you know, zoom or just our phones or just screen time in general, TV, just a ton of screen time these days. And I think that's why we're seeing a real uptick in digital eye syndrome, um, which basically is a, you know, a fancy word for eye irritation. But uh, what tends to happen is you, when you focus on, on your devices and your screens, uh, your blink rate decreases, your eyes tend to dry out, uh, and you start to get you know, some eye irritation. And for some people, it's not a huge deal. Um, for me, it's more about seeing the screen, and that can get really annoying. Uh, for other people, it triggers migraines. It can be really, really debilitating. Um, and I put this in the category of one of those things that, uh, we kind of like, but it's not good for our bodies and it's not good for our eyes um, to look outside of, of the window. I love looking outside like the top picture there. Um, you can see outside, that's good for you, but that transition between that light and the other light is really, really tough on the eyes. Um, so we're going from dark to bright or bright to dark often um, with the intensity, uh, the contrast intensity being great is, is, is really hard on your eyes. So. We're seeing a lot of eye issues at home. Um, you know, use your blinds, try to set up the monitor 90 degrees to the light source so there's no glare on the screen. Um, and try to keep, you know, the outside lighting similar to the inside lighting. But I think it's one of those places where as much as we hate the lighting at work, uh, it's very, very consistent. It's very, very easy on our eyes in the big picture uh, when we look at the home setup. Um, and it's something we may not think about because uh, I'm looking outside a lot and it's great, uh, but it is tough, tough on the eyes. Um, and over time, it stresses your muscles on the eyes and it, you know, over time it gives you nearsightedness. Uh, so we want to take care of the eyes. You know, like a lot of the things I say, easier said than done. Um, the research is, you know, the 20-20-20 rule. So every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break and look at something 20 feet away at least. Uh, so the rule of thumb is trying to change your focal length often. 
um, so your eyes will blink and it's healthier you know, for, for your vision. Uh, again, that's really tough to do. Um, so we have to get up every 20 minutes, change our vo uh, focal length every 20 minutes, move around every 20 minutes. Um, um, you see where this is going. It's, it's much easier said than done than to, to take the breaks. And some people are natural break takers and, and fidgeters, and that tends to help them. And other people need either software or, you know, some way to, you know, get them to move and take a break. But um, I think eyes at home are the, is one of the things that take a, take a good um, spend some time on uh, because it's one of those things I think we overlook and oftentimes we place our screens in you know what feels good to us but it might not be best for our bodies. Hey Greg we have a few questions that have come in that I want to bring up for you. Uh, first about this slide someone mentioned that they get migraines and so they're appreciative of that thought about the connection with screen time and migraines and they have their question is do you have any thoughts or information on recommendations for screen brightness and or color range adjustments? Really, really good question. And um, like most of the things I said, it's gonna depend. And um, the human body is, is quite variable. The eye is even more variable. Um, so the one thing I always say is just, you know, go to the optometrist, you know, get a checkup. Um, you know, work with your doctor, tell them what you're doing, you know, how, how much you're on the screen. Uh, make sure you know that's okay in, in the big picture you want to you know you want to be comfortable and, I, and it's it's tough to say because some people's color palettes are different than others and even windows and apple both have a ton of different you know colors in the background so i always say you know play around with that you know the research is really about transition and contrast so you know if you think about how bright a room is and how bright the screen is you want those to be about the same um, so you'd want to change that uh, you know, the contrast or the brightness to about the same as the room. And that's, you know, it's really tough to do because um, most of our, our houses are quite variable. Um, so I think that's where the toughness is very difficult. Um, you know, there are a lot of good things in glasses these days, the blue blockers, um, the glare blocking glasses. I've, I've heard really good things about those. Not a ton of research out about them yet, but um, just in terms of comfort, I've heard good things. Um, but I think it's windows and color palettes and, you know, just the basic things on the monitor too, the brightness, the contrast. But there's a lot of things you can do there. Uh, so, I, you know, what I say is spend some time. I, I can't, you know, there's really no easy way to say what's, what's going to be comfortable on your eyes beside the, the duration aspect of it. Um, Thank you. So we'll spend um, some time and I definitely, you know, go see the optometrist. We have, you know, usually you know, pretty good centers there. Does that cover what you think or? Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Uh, a couple of other questions have come in. I think about a previous slide. They're uh, asking for recommendations and I'm not sure if you were planning on going over this later, but uh, recommendations on a desktop computer stand that is adjustable and where to get one, what types to get. Yes, we're getting there. Um, okay. So yeah, we'll get to some uh, some equipment and the fun Great. stuff here. And then one other question that's come in, what are your tips for ergonomic best practices when working outside? Good one, good one outside. Um, outside is very difficult. Um, and I do have, again, clients that, that work completely outside. Uh, and mainly, again, it's, the, it's kind of the eye issues. Um, so trying to be able to see the screen clearly uh, but honestly, the same principles always come into play. Um, so we'll talk about products in a little bit, but, you know, trying to get postural support or creating, you know, a good standing station outside, getting outside, I think for shorter periods of time is good. Um, I mean, I would write, try to recommend, what I try to do is take calls or things that I don't have to see the screen outside and I can walk around, like take a walking call or something. Um, but computers outside are difficult. There's just no doubt about it. It's really, really tough on your eyes. Um, so I, you know, I would, I would tend to say against it, but again, you know, I have clients that they have to work in their backyard because there's nowhere else to go. So, um, and I've dealt with it. So you got to try to find some, um, shade, uh, again, try to get that contrast very similar, try to get a comfortable, you know, support, um, but I've had some people that use um, use different furniture for standing outside or sitting, um, so it can work. But I would say it would go into that category of you know shorter periods of time. Great, thank you. That's uh, all the questions for now. All right. 
So yeah, um, Captain Obvious with uh, the 2020 20 rule, but you know, um, we keep seeing it. It's just taking the breaks is easier said than done. And um, but the research is there, so you know you can't deny it. We're seeing research on movement. We're seeing the 20 minutes on visual. We're seeing even 20 minutes on concentration. So there's something about humans in 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes um, that's healthy for us. And uh, it's just something to take really seriously. Eat again, it's tough to do. Um, I totally know. But I say at least once an hour, try to get up, move around. Walking is usually you know, one of the best things you can do. Use the big muscles of your legs, get the blood flowing, get the metabolic pathway going a different direction. Um, Get the get the get the muscles moving. Um, so I think walking is very very good, um, and just standing up because when you sit, you double the pressure on your lower back. If you're sitting on the couch, leaning forward, you're probably getting six to eight times the pressure on the lower back. So it, it adds up. Uh, so taking the breaks, whether you're a natural break taker or you need a you know a, a reminder, there's good software out there. Uh, it can get annoying. It pops up. Um, they have a free 45 day trial for RS Tigard. Uh, and I think they're still doing the six month trial during, during, during the COVID. You can check that out. Um, it's probably overkill for most people. I think you can, you know, put a timer on your phone. There's different apps on the phone, an app called stand up. You can just tell it when you want to stand up and it'll, it'll remind you so many things out there. I think it's more of figuring out what works for you. Um, cause there's just so many different options. But you know, we, what we do know is taking the breaks really, really helps. So um, drink lots of water, stay hydrated. That gets you going to the bathroom. It's another break. Um, so any way to keep moving, again, easier said than done. But that's where the research is going. It has been for many, many years. And um, it's one of those things you see it. It's like it's just, one of the, it's just tough to do every 20 minutes. But um, keep those ratios in mind. You know, 20 minutes of sitting, eight minutes of standing, two minutes of moving. Um, and try to work it into the day. So on to more of the fun stuff, I would say in ergonomics, you know, the, the products. Um, so these are our product sheets, uh, our basic remote product sheets for, for Berkeley. Um, and the way, you know, our program is, is based around faculty, staff, and our funding comes in. And basically to use our funding, you have to have 50% uh, time at the university. Um, so, if so, you can, you know, use their matching funds, but you know, you can see the, the prices aren't too bad here. Um, these are just the basic products we've been using. So, you know, like the top ones, there, just an external keyboard and mouse for most people. It doesn't need to be ergonomic, but you know, some people usually their ergonomic keyboards are for people with wider shoulders. Uh, but those are available as well. You know, we tend to try to go wireless with these devices. Uh, I tend to get standard mice. Um, I really don't like the the wire the, um, the laptop mice or the mobile mice because they get really really small and don't don't support your hand. So I tend to go with a normal size or to larger you know wireless mouse. Um, but if you do need no more ergonomic equipment like keyboards or vertical mice, there you know there are available out there. Uh, so this is all through CDWG and it's a contracted vendor at Berkeley. Um, you can you can use those. This, this program, if you like, uh, Amazon as well, you know, all these similar products are available there. Um, but what I try to do is at least get external keyboards and mice. Uh, you can see there's an HDMI cable on there. Uh, I think for a low price that, go, that gets, uh, goes a long way. Uh, sometimes you need a foot rest, uh, there's a basic foot rest in there. Um, you know, a lot of times what I'm seeing, especially because the things are so high, the dining room tables or tables in general, is that we do lean forward, we do lean on our wrists quite a bit. Um, so wrist rests tend to help, uh, even though I don't you know, want to be leaning on them, but you know, it's just something softer than, than the hard table. Uh, the laptop lifter from Gold Touch on the right there on the second page, uh, that just kind of lifts your screen a little bit, but you do have to have the external keyboard and mouse to use those. Um, so again, trying to raise that screen and, and get external keyboards and mice to, to separate the, the input device from the, from the visual target. I think most people can use, you know, something around the house in terms of pillows or cushions, but sometimes there's a couple cushions there uh, that can help make, a, you know, a bad chair somewhat okay. Um, it's always better to have an ergonomic chair, obviously, but most of us don't have the room or, um, 
resources for that, but you know, there's options for, there's options for everything. So, you know, these are kind of the basic, the basic tools. Um, so external keyboards, mice, I tend to go wireless. I tend to go a little bit smaller uh, for the keyboards, but not the mice. Um, I do think it's important to have a, a standard size uh, mouse and then looking at some postural support. Um, again, we're going to look into chairs and tables. It's been really difficult just to get things to people safely. Um, I've had injuries on just putting equipment together. Um, I've had injuries on lifting things uh, from just the outside of the house into the house. Um, so it's been really tough to find, to find good products, uh, affordable products um, that are available. So most of the products we, we have been able to get are just standard ergo products that are usually too big for most people or too expensive. Um, but there are, there are options out there. We've tended to do, to do is try to get things with good lumbar support, um, some adjustability, you know, at least height adjustability, get your, you know, get your hands at the right spot. Cause a lot of, most of us have to raise up if we're using a higher table and then use some type of foot support. Um, definitely try to stay away from those, uh, things that don't have adjustable arms or arms that get in the way like that picture on the right there. So real common to have these type of cheaper chairs um, with these kind of weird armrests, but they really block you um, from getting close to your workstation and don't really provide much support. So unless the arms are adjustable and can move, uh, I would tend not to go with arms and just try to get, you know, as much postural support, lower back and, and upper back, you know, at least shoulder blade level uh, where you're getting good back support. Um, so there's a few chairs there, you know, usually uh, what I've seen on Amazon has been tough. Um, I would think from, you know, you can find something for a hundred dollars for a couple, two to $300, you get something decent. That's kind of that chair on the left there. That's a $300 chair. That's what we've been using. It's not your typical ergo chair, but it has some height, has some lumbar, um, you know, it has pretty good postural support and it's not super heavy and super large, like some of the ergo chairs. Um, so there's, there's some options out there. Uh, again, there's not a ton right now and I always look at, you know, the cool thing is you can go on Amazon. Usually there's, there's pictures and, and videos of how to assemble things, but look at the assembly. Um, what we're trying to do is trying to get things assembled to people's doors so they can just kind of roll them in or lift them in. But uh, like I say, every situation is different. Uh, but it's been, it's been tough to find, to find good chairs. So um, hey Greg, would you, you know, mind sharing? Of, sure. Sorry, would you mind sharing the brand of the chair that you recommend on the on this slide? Yeah, so the one on the left there is a, is a Steelcase Series One chair, um, and in, in, during this pandemic, most of our vendors have have offered you know pricing to anyone uh, from the public really or that works at the university. Um, so. You, you can use the disc, our UC discount for most purchases. So that chair for the UC discount comes around around $300. Um, you know, it's still pricey, but it's not, you know, the five, six, $700 ergo chairs, and it still has some adjustability. So that's a still case series one. Um, and if anyone has questions or, you know, want to discuss, we, we're totally open for that um, because, it's, it's always a moving target. Um, every week we get an update on what chairs are available, how many are available, where they're available, if they're assembled or not. And it just keeps changing. So um, even with the keyboards and mice, I found that, that some days they're there and then, you know, sometimes they're a week or two back order just just because where we're at. So everything keeps moving. Um, at this point, this is kind of what I've seen. The, the middle chair there is from Amazon. I think that's like a, it's like a $200 basic, you know, ergo chair. Um, I think, I think that's kind of what you're looking for. Something height adjustable, something with some adjustments, but gives you good back support without the arms. Um, if not, uh, but like I said, it's, it's, it's constantly kind of changing. Um, but if anyone needs to, you know, know what products are available, they can reach out to me. Uh, and it depends on the vendor. Um, but like I said, most of the ergo stuff is available now. It's just super expensive. What we're trying to do is find, find lower cost, um, good quality chairs uh, for people. Great, thank you. One other question that has come in is, have you, or do you know anything about the products sold through the company Fully, F-U-L-L-Y in San Francisco, uh, specifically the Jarvis desk or the Perch stools? Have you heard of that company? 
you know, not off the top of my head. I've heard of the Jarvis desk. Um, and I could do some research on that. Um, you know, go, going into the desks here, what you tend to see um, on the market and what, what tends to be the price differences is, is like how much adjustability something has. So for, for Berkeley, what we try to do when we, we purchase desks, we try to get them like, like the ladies using there on the upper right, desks that pretty much fit everybody. They go from 22 inches, that'll fit somebody in a sitting position that's five foot tall, four foot 10, somewhere in there, to you know, 48 inches, which can you know, support a six foot, eight inch male. So we're trying to find products that fit everybody on the campus. Now, if you're looking for products for your home, we don't have to be that aggressive with our products. Um, you can find products that just fit you. I think the problem with adjustable products um, is that they're made again for taller people. So the ones that come in at really good price points that you see, you know, maybe like the job, I have to look it up, but a lot of times you'll see desks from Costco, uh, electric adjustable desks, um, and they're a good price point, maybe three to five hundred dollars, but they may start at twenty eight inches and go to you know maybe forty six inches, or they have a different range. So if they start at twenty eight or twenty nine inches, you know you got to be like six foot one to have your feet on the floor and sit there comfortably. Um, so it's not saying you couldn't use those desks and sit up a little higher with a footrest, but they generally just don't fit that many people, uh, and that's why they're cheaper. Um, and again, you have to look at the assembly. So there's, there are some things available out there. Um, you know, we've been doing a ton of research out and just, you know, and it depends on the cost. Like sometimes we'll find a company, oh, it's got a great desk for 400, but they're going to charge another hundred to assemble it, another this or that. And it, and it always ends up being around a thousand dollars, you know, when it comes down to it. So there are, you know, a few cheaper tables out there, but make sure, you know, take your, your sitting elbow height and your standing elbow height to so the bottom of your elbow when you're sitting comfortably like the picture there on the left and then standing on the right and you'll know so for me my sitting elbow height is 27 inches my standing elbow height is 43 inches um, and I can figure out what product will work for me uh, unfortunately like I said a lot of those cheaper products start at a higher range um, so a lot of the electric desks sound great um, like the ones, and they, they worked well, the ones at Costco, they were like 300 bucks, but they had a very limited range. So people are still, and that's really our, our issue is not to get people standing so much it's to get people sitting in the right position. Cause that's where we are the most. And that's the riskiest point. So I really want to get people sitting with good back support, like the chairs working in as an exoskeleton, your body can relax. That's really what we're looking for. So the ability to stand is great, but I'm really looking for that really good postural support. So what we have done, we've looked at different desks. Um, and one of the first things and what they're using a lot around the UC system are camping tables. Um, so they are adjustable. They come in a few different heights. It's kind of that one in the middle there. Um, they're relatively inexpensive, 40, 50 bucks, and they're sturdy um, and they're adjustable. So you can get to the right sitting height. You, you know, you have to add a lot of stuff to get standing, but you can get to the right sitting height. Um, that's a kid's table to the left, left there. Again, it's an adjustable table. It's what they call pin height adjustable. So you flip them over, you change the leg height, and then you can adjust how tall the table is. So it's not electric, uh, but the cost is a lot lower. So you can get these tables for, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars for kids that look pretty well and they're adjustable. So as they grow, you can keep adjusting. And for even us, they, they come to the right height. So a lot of times kids tables for adults work really well because like I said, for myself at five, nine, my elbow height's 27 inches and there's not too many tables that go that well. So, um, and that's just how they design furniture. So looking for adjustability, pin height, electric or crank, some type of adjustability, and then know where your elbow height is standing or sitting and, and try, you know, figure out that workstation for you. Um, but a lot of times the cheaper things, you know, the one I went to really easily was, where the camping tables, they fold up, um, you can, you know, put them somewhere and pull them out. Um, so they're, they're pretty flexible, they're safe, they're sturdy, they get to the right height. So they're not pretty, uh, but they, you know, for, for ergonomics, they get you to the right place. Now, what I get more um, of is the, is the, sorry, oh, can I, can right. I jump in really quick? Absolutely. Someone was asking, uh, can you provide any brands for those manually adjustable tables? Uh, maybe for the camping tables? Uh, I, I can. Um, I would say it's, uh, 
touch base after that. I could send you some, some, again, it, it keeps changing. Like I remember I got an email last week that I think UC Davis bought a bunch of them. So they were out of stock. So they, they kind of constantly keep changing. Um, but I can give you kind of a resource and like what you're looking for. So okay. uh, you want something sturdy. that's going to hold at least a laptop and some devices. And then you want them to go to the right height. So if I took my, if I took the measurement of my elbow height and I was, let's say, you know, five foot two, uh, it might be 22 inches, right? So you'd want to look for a table that has a 20, you know, it goes down to 22 inches. Uh, and a lot of those tables, they won't, they'll have like specific height. They'll go from 22, then they'll stop at 24, stop at 26 and 28, something like that. Um, so it won't be this like limited range, but it'll give you certain numbers that you can shoot for. Like the more expensive tables, like the kids' tables, if you look up, you know, if you go to Amazon and put in an adjustable kids' table, you know, you'll find some. They'll be a little bit more expensive, um, but you will be able to, you know, adjust in smaller increments. So you'll be able to go to 22, 23, 24. Um, so they'll be a little bit more adjustable than like the camping tables. Um, so, and then you'll find, you know, really good. Like I said, we, we try to do the adjust really, really good. They last a long time, but they're, you know, about $700. Like I said, we get them with shipping and uh, getting it to your door assembled. It's like, it's like a thousand dollars. Questions I get most is like the bottom right, um, the very desk or the Viva desk or the desktop units. Um, and, you know, it depends on what you're working with. So again, I always go back to that, you know, know your sitting elbow height. You know, know where you should be sitting because that's the most important part. So a lot of times what these units do, they, they just sit on top of a desk that's usually too high for somebody. Um, so it's makes it makes it even higher in a sitting position. So while we'll afford a, you know, a standing position, it doesn't afford a safe sitting position. So, you know, a lot of times these things are expensive, they're heavy, they're awkward, um, but they allow you to stand. Um, you know, that, that's true. Uh, but I always go back to, if I was going to spend my money, I want to get a good sitting position. I'd rather have a good chair and then build the standing station, maybe somewhere else. Um, but you know, if you have a table that's, you know, 26 inches and you put a desktop unit on top of it and you're at a good sitting and standing height, then, they, then they work really well. Um, but that's why, you know, ergonomists tend to shy away from these type of products because they don't address, proper sitting ergonomics um, and standing. But if you go back to the, the Cornell research, you know, you only should be standing, you know, maybe 15 minutes an hour max. So we're still looking at good sitting positions. Uh, I'm not saying these things can't work. Uh, I've just seen, you know, a lot of people purchase them that don't really, you know, solve the problem. Um, but if you have a low desk, they, you know, they can work. All right. So, um, Tons of resources out there. Um, obviously, and I think that's what we try to do at Be Well at Work is stay a little bit up to date on you know, the latest research, um, you know, what's, what's, what's relevant in the literature. So, um, uh, can I jump in with a few more questions at this point? Absolutely. Uh, someone was asking where to find and recommendations on a desktop computer stand that is adjustable. I think you, you mentioned desktop computer stands briefly, but where would be maybe some good websites or companies to look, I guess, for computer stands or for chairs or tables? So when you say desktop, that's something that sits on the desk. Um, you know, like I said, I don't generally recommend those. But you can, you know, very desk is probably the, the leader in that. And they have a lot of different products. Um, again, I would be, you know, I'd, they're also more expensive than the others and uh, they can be heavy too. So I'd, I'd watch out for the desktop units. Um, I, I think they were referring to a laptop, uh, a laptop stand. So in, ter in terms of laptops, um, what we try to do is, you know, either you're going to use them on your lap, like with a regular or have external devices. So again, if it's, if what we're trying to do is use external devices and, and try to find a, a table or something that is at the, at the right height. Uh, so again, there's different, you know, like I said, there's different options out there. Um, I, I try to get adjustable, but you don't need to, if you know, you're sitting elbow height, you can go out and look for a table 
um, that fits that. And then you could add a, you know, a desktop unit to stand or just find a table that fits the sitting and standing range. Uh, it's, I wouldn't say there's no, you know, I would say right now, um, I either go to Amazon or CDW uh, cause I know they can get products to people right now uh, for the most part. Um, you know, okay. Amazon tells okay. you what's going on, but I think that's the tough part. A lot of places you'll find cool stuff, but it's just not available right now. So, mm -hmm. um, but our go-to has been Amazon and, uh, and CDW, uh, for the, for the campus stuff. And that, sorry, just to repeat CDW, just the letters, uh, CDW or CDWG is the government. Yeah. It's like, um, it's like an online shopping, uh, for computer peripherals. Uh, so there will be some tables on there. Um, there will be a lot of keyboards and mice, a lot of computer accessories. Okay, great. Um, someone else was wondering, what are your recommendations for using audio listening devices? For example, are over-the-ear headphones better than the earbuds? Really, really good question. So I didn't touch on that because was, there was a slide on that with my daughter. Um, so in the big picture, it's better to hear... Uh, you know, through your computer audio and not use um, headphones or headsets. Now, obviously, we know we need some of those for, for good ergonomics, too. Um, so noise canceling is recommended. Uh, unfortunately, I think with headsets, it is the, the more you spend, the better you get um, in terms of quality and, and noise canceling and, and things of that nature. Um, so I would look at what you're doing. You know, I think it, it definitely affords you the ability to move around a lot more if you have something wireless. Um, you know, I see a ton of people with the earbuds, but I, you know, it's one of those things I, I try to stay away from the recommendations too, because we have wellness people that look at radio frequencies. And if I said, you know, get an earbud or whatever, they'd kill me. Um, so it's kind of figuring out what works for you. Uh, you know, in general, like I said, it's, it's better to hear, you know, from, from the device and not through uh, the earbuds, but we're obviously working in uh, different situations. And a lot of times I need the noise canceling. Um, like if people were here today, I'd need it. Uh, so I think it's, it's one of those things, figuring out what you need. It's better to not have it, um, uh, especially for the kids. The research is pretty strong there for the kids um, that they can do some, they can do some serious damage with the headphones and, uh, it's, it's much better to not have those. But uh, for us, you know, I, I go noise canceling, better quality. Um, and, and I go, you know, for me, it's about the ergonomics. I don't know a ton about the ear. I've, I've seen the latest research on it, but um, it, it comes back to neck positioning and movement. Uh, so I like the earbuds because you can move around a lot more, um, especially we're doing so much zooming. So if we can, you know, be in a good position with our neck and move, that that's really helpful. So that's where I look at those. Great, thank you. Um, and someone asked, what was the TED Talk recommendation? Oh, that was on the, uh, just on the concentration um, aspect of it, where that's why they've been doing, you know, they, they, they try to keep those things short. Um, and that's why you're kind of seeing shorter and shorter things, but uh, like the human concentration windows, you know, around 20 minutes or so to where you stop ingesting information. Um, which, you know, just falls in line with the 20 minutes for visual recommendations and falls in line with the 20 minutes for physical recommendations. So it's more about just trying to get you to move and change your position and change your work habits every 20 minutes, which is really hard. But that's where more of that came from, where just the, re the latest research on physical movement, concentration, because, um, you know, ergonomics, I think if people think about postures, we, you know, it's, it is about performance at the end of the day. And, we're all trying to perform our best at our, at our jobs and you know, all these little things come into play. So um, concentration and, and just being, um, you know, when, when you're sitting, you're more focused apparently, you do more concentrative work. If you stand, you're more collaborative apparently and uh, you're more open-minded and have more um, big picture type ideas, um, you know, little things like that. But that's where that, that 20 minute TED talk Awesome. Well, we're right at two o'clock. So I, uh, I'll let you wrap up any last things you want to say, Greg, but I just wanted to say to thank you to everyone for joining and thank you to Greg for this great presentation. Uh, be sure to check in the chat. Some people have been sharing links to 
RSI guard to CDW to some headphones and keyboards that they recommend just from their own personal experience. Uh, someone also suggested time out as a, as a break timer. Um, and I also wanted to mention that if you do, if any participants here work at UC Berkeley Extension, we also have our own internal ergonomics team that you should reach out to. Um, and I will share that information uh, in their follow-up email. So we will be sending out an email with this recording and the slides and contact information. So you can reach out to Greg if you wanted recommendations on specific brands and products. And you can reach out to Berkeley Extension's ergonomics team if you work uh, at Berkeley Extension. So thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, sorry to be so talkative and go on, try to keep no, this on is par great. With, Thank the, you so much. With, the, with the research and not to go too long because I know we get zoomed out. But like I said, a lot of good resources there from the ergonomics, you know, it's good stuff on computer, obviously. Um, there's a handout for the kids there, uh, handouts for the adults, of course. Um, a lot of stuff on back care. And then Be Well at Work just has a lot of good resources. Um, around elder care, uh, child care models, you know, all the up-to-date COVID stuff. Um, we have a good page there. So I guess they, everything keeps moving very quickly right now, dependent care, wellness activities, what's happening on campus. So it's a good place to go and just see what's, what's happening with our programs. And, you know, ergonomics is just one part of it. So please feel free to reach out to myself or Mallory Lynch. Um, you know, we're always here to help. Uh, any product recommendations or, you know, like I say, things keep moving. So if you find something that works, usually it'll work for somebody else too. So I appreciate, you know, everyone putting links in the chat and talking. And I think this is one of those things you just talk and it's so diverse and, and so variable that I think all that really, really helps. Thank you so much, Greg. And would you mind just sharing your email again one more time? And we'll also email it out to everyone. Absolutely. It's uh, gryan at berkeley.edu. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And we'll, again, we'll be sending out this recording and slides. And please feel free to reach out to uh, Greg. Or, of course, if you are working for a company with an ergonomics team as well, you can reach out to them. And thank you so much for, your for joining us and for your time and attention, everyone. Definitely. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you again to Greg. This was amazing. Thanks so much. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone.